Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. My coverage of Linux Mint continues in this video. I've already created a video that shows you the entire process of blowing away your hard drive and installing Linux Mint 20, which was just released, as the only operating system on your computer. But in this video, I'm going to show you the same process, but as a dual boot between Windows 10 and Linux Mint. And I'm going to be doing that on this laptop right here. This is a System76 lemur, a bit older, but it's been very good to me throughout the years. And I'm going to be doing everything on this machine, not a virtual machine. I don't use virtual machines on my channel unless I let you guys know that otherwise. But we're going to go ahead and get started and set up a dual boot between Windows 10 and Linux Mint 20. So it's going to be great. Let's go ahead and get started. So here we are on my laptop with Windows 10 installed. We can go ahead and get started. The first thing we'll want to do is open up a browser. And then we will want to navigate to etcher.io. And scroll down a bit here. And this application right here is awesome for writing flash drives or SD cards for the purposes of installing Linux both for setting up Raspberry Pi SD cards and also flash drives for installing a Linux distribution on a laptop like we're going to do right now. And it works for Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. So that's why I always recommend this one because it is available for each of the major platforms, which is pretty cool. It should automatically detect your operating system. Obviously, I'm running Windows, so it detected that. So I'll click on this button here, and then I'll save the file. We'll give that a moment to download. All right, great, so that's all set. Now, I've already downloaded Linux Mint, and I'll have the download link in the description below. So if I go to the file manager here and then downloads, you'll see that I have two files downloaded. I have Linux Mint itself, and I also have the Etcher utility as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Etcher. And I'm going to show you how that process works. But essentially what you're going to do is agree to this, whatever that says. It's going to go ahead and install it. And then here's the Etcher utility right here. So the first thing we'll do is click Flash from File. And then we will click on the file here that we've downloaded from the Linux Mint website. And again, I'll have the links in the description below. I'll click Open. And now we need to select a target. I don't have a flash drive plugged in right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that. And as you can see, it automatically detected the flash drive. So basically, just make sure you don't have anything important on that flash drive. But I'm going to check the box right here. I'll click Select. And then I'm going to click the Flash button to go ahead and set that up. And then I'll give this a moment to complete and I will be right back. Okay, so there we go. We have successfully created a bootable installer for installing Linux Mint. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of that right now. But before we do, just make sure that you back up everything on your computer before we go any further. So at this point, I recommend that you go ahead and back up your computer completely Preferably take an image of your Windows installation if you can just in case something goes wrong. Now I've tested this process again and again and it always works for me but you know we're dealing with technology here. Technology wants to fail for any reason or excuse it can find. So just you know create a backup. It doesn't hurt just in case something goes wrong. And once you have that done we'll go ahead and get the installation of Linux Mint started. So I'll close this window here and ignore this little warning there and let's go ahead and restart and then we'll get ready to press whatever key accesses the boot menu just check your documentation mine is F7 so I'm pressing it like a madman right now so I don't miss my opportunity and then here's my boot screen so next what we're going to do is go ahead and select the flash drive that we have used to create bootable Linux Mint Media and this is what mine is called right here so I'll press enter so at this menu, we get a few options. We can go ahead and start Linux Mint, the first option, the one that's selected. 
That starts live mode, which I'll talk about in just a moment. We also have a compatibility mode as well. So if you end up having any problems, this might be something that you can try to see if you can get further in compatibility mode if you have issues. OEM install is beyond the scope of this video. We also have an option to check the integrity of the medium, which doesn't hurt. It adds some additional time, but it essentially makes sure that your flash drive is mastered properly. I'm going to go ahead and choose the first option though. And here we are. We are successfully running Linux Mint right now. This is live mode. This is awesome. If you didn't already know about this, essentially this allows you to use your flash drive as if it was an actual hard drive inside the computer. Basically, Linux Mint is running off the flash drive directly, and it will run a little bit slower, most likely, than it will when you install it to the actual hardware. But it does give you an option to test Linux Mint to make sure that everything works before you go ahead and install it. And that's exactly what I recommend you do. I get comments every now and then about people that go ahead and install Linux and then, um, you know, something doesn't work. Maybe Wi-Fi doesn't work, dual screens, that doesn't work or something like that. Always test the distribution before you install it and you'll never have that problem. So what I'm going to do is test the internet. I'll just go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi. Make sure we can get a good connection here. And we do, it is connected. So we can go ahead and open up Firefox, the default browser, just go ahead and make sure that that works. And as we can see, it does. I navigated to my website and everything appears to be working just fine. So basically just make sure that you test your hardware, Wi-Fi, you know, make sure you can access the internet, all that good stuff. And also, again, make sure you have a backup of your Windows installation just in case we run into an issue. But I'm going to go ahead and install Linux Mint. I'll double click on this icon right here. The first screen that you see right here is basically asking us to choose the language for the installer. I'll leave it as the default. Click Continue. The second screen allows us to test our keyboard to make sure that everything is working. We could type in this little box right here. It's automatically detecting the US keyboard in my case, but if you want to use something else, you can select that accordingly and then go ahead and test it. So next, this option is completely optional, but I would recommend most of you go ahead and do this. If you have any plans of enjoying like media files, you know, like MP3s or video files that you may have downloaded, it's probably a good idea to check this box, even if not, if you ever will be in a situation where you might have locally stored media on your computer, it's probably just a good idea to check that box. I can't think of any downsides, so we'll click Continue. Now here we have the Installation Type Selection screen, and this is where we go ahead and choose what kind of installation we want. Normally, I would just choose this option here, Erase Disk and Install Linux Mint, but that's not what we're going to choose because we want a dual boot. And that was automatically selected. Install Linux Mint alongside the Windows Boot Manager. Great. It's telling us that the personal files and data that we have is supposed to be kept. And it's telling me that it's going to give us the option to choose which operating system we want when the computer starts up. So that definitely looks like the option we want, and it is. So just make sure that this is selected and then click Continue. And then at this screen, we can decide how much space we want to give Windows and how much space we want to give Linux. In this case, when I installed Windows 10, it was installed taking over the entire hard drive. It's a 500 gig hard drive, as you can see right here. And when I installed Windows 10, all 500 gigs were allocated to Windows. Now what this screen is allowing us to do is choose how to divide the hard drive. We can give basically more space to Linux Mint you know, I can go ahead and go all the way down here, although we probably shouldn't. Don't want to have too little. And then we can go all the way to the right to give more space here to Windows. So I like to have it probably somewhere in the middle. You want to make sure, though, that you don't give either one too little space. Just give them both some room to grow, spread their feet a little bit, and adjust this however you see fit. And then when you have it adjusted, just click Install Now. And it's basically asking us, you know, do you really want to do this? Because this is the point of no return. Since you have a backup and an image of your drive, this is no concern to us. So we'll click continue to confirm that. 
and yet another point of no return. So I'll go ahead and click continue to accept the changes here. All right, at this screen, you just basically click on the map close to your location. This sets the locale and time zone and things like that. So I'll try to get mine over here, and there it is. Uh, Detroit is close enough, I guess. I'll click continue. And it's already installing in the background, by the way, so it's multitasking. That's pretty cool. So here, you can go ahead and fill out your user information. I'm just going to keep mine a bit simple here. We're choosing a password, and we have to remember that because we need to be able to log in. And we can also encrypt our home directory if we would like to do so. Up to you if you want that added protection or not. We can also have it log in automatically. I'm going to avoid that. Again, that's up to you. I'll click continue. And it's installing. I'm going to go ahead and let this finish. And then I'll be right back once it's done. So with this message, it basically confirms that the installation process is complete. Was it a success? Let's go ahead and click restart now and see for ourselves whether or not this worked. Just like it says, I'll remove the flash drive. Press enter. So here we have the boot screen. So Linux Mint 20 is the first option here. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this finish. I'm not going to press anything. And here we have the initial login screen, so we just put in whatever password we set during the installation process. And well, there you go. Linux Mint was successful at least, so we do have that installed. Now the question is, does Windows still work? Let's go ahead and find out. I will reboot again, and I will select Windows when I get the option at the beginning. Here we are at the boot screen, so I will choose Windows Boot Manager. I'll press Enter. So oh, there you go. The process was a complete success. You just saw that I was able to boot into Linux Mint and now here I am in Windows 10. So I can go ahead and select between the two at boot time and benefit from both operating systems. So there you go. That was my process for setting up a dual boot between Windows and Linux Mint. I hope that helped you out. I hope you enjoyed that. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please click that like button because that lets YouTube know that you want to see more Linux content just like this. And I'll have more Linux Mint coverage on my channel very soon. So go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I will see you in the next video.